Hey everybody, my name is Trevor, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a quick and very simple traffic generator leveraging native AWS services. So recently I had to throw together a demo and I reached out to people on LinkedIn for different ideas of what's the easiest way to make a traffic generator. And a good friend of mine, David Turner, suggested go ahead and use EventBridge and Lambda to create a recurring traffic generation pattern. And it's worked beautifully. I'm gonna show you how I built it and how it works here. Um, I think this would be great if you're looking to build a traffic generator for like a demo or some type of test that you're doing in your environment. Or if you just wanna understand more about serverless patterns and event-driven architectures, this is about as simple of a use case as you can deliver on leveraging those technologies. Also with this method, you don't have to know much about how to code and you don't need to manage any servers, right? You don't have to run this on your laptop. You don't have to run this on a container or on a VM in the cloud. This is fully native running on AWS, which has its advantages. Another awesome thing about this is it's virtually free and it's kind of fun to play with these two services. So. The Lambda functions, they're all staying within my free tier. And the EventBridge trigger, technically EventBridge costs $1 per 1 million events based on what I'm reading on the AWS website. I'm having these run every minute, so it would take almost two years to cost $1. So is it 100% free? No. Is it really, really cheap? Yes, it's really, really cheap. So. Uh, Keep that in mind. If you decide to keep this running for five years, you might set yourself back three or four US dollars. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm excited to show you. You are looking at the trusty AWS console. Before I show you the services, I just want to show you kind of how this works at a very rudimentary level. Okay, um, what I've set up here is leveraging EventBridge and Lambda. So basically EventBridge, you can think of it like a cloud hosted cron job the way I'm using it. Uh, so this is basically an event and I've got it set on a schedule to run every minute and it triggers a Lambda function that has a very simple chunk of Python code that is going to run a random number of requests. So with the, the combination of these two services, which I'll show you how to set up in a second, every minute I'm going to trigger a Lambda that's going to run a random number of requests against my API. I personally use this to build a demo. Uh, because it, it creates a nice graphical interface for monitoring, which is something I'm preparing for a project I'm working on. Uh, but I think at the very least, it's cool and an interesting application of serverless technology. Now, you could use like regular cron jobs and a Python script on a VM to do what I'm doing, but then you have to manage that VM. And this is a fully serverless approach, which has its advantages, including not having to pay for the VM hosting. All right, let me show you how I've set this up. I'll start with the Lambda function because that's really the, the core of the functionality here. So I actually have a few different traffic generators running. I'll show you two. So I have multiple Lambda functions because the demo I set up is, is, is showcasing different types of traffic. And so I just created a Lambda function for each different type of traffic, okay? So basically all I've done is, th this is written in Python. I think it's 2.7 because, uh, just because the, the packages and dependencies work best with that language in Lambda. If you run it on the latest Python code, you may have to import the requests package manually, just FYI. Um, but it's a very simple code. I've got this URL, which is the endpoint of my API gateway. I've set headers that I'm gonna send in. And so in in this traffic generator, the headers are actually um, very basic. I'm just setting the application type, but then I've got another one where I wanna send in an authorization token. And that's just for the demo that I created. But what's great is you know, if, you're, if you're using this to create a traffic generator or generate some traffic patterns, you can just very easily edit these key value pairs to add your own custom headers. I'm not sending a body in any of my requests, but you could also add a body into this code very simply by adding a body section and, and then adding that into the, uh, the get request, okay? So like I said, the code is very simple. Uh, I've got a URL that I'm going to hit. I've got some headers and then I'm calling the requests package to uh, hit the URL and the headers that I've specified. As you can see, I've got this one set up to just do a random number of requests between zero and 500. And so if I test this, I'll, I'll be, I'll turn on some debugging here so you can see. If I just run a random event, what I should see is a bunch of 200 responses from my API, right? And so uh, that proves to me that this is working. I could I could debug this further and, and send logs to CloudWatch and things like that, but I think this is this is good enough for now. Okay, so I've got this Lambda function that can hit my API and I can customize the headers and I can customize the amount of traffic by adjusting the requests up and down. 
Um, but I need something to trigger it. That's where Event Bridge comes in. And Event Bridge and Lambda, they are a lethal combo. Uh, you can really use these for a variety of, of use cases. All right, so in Event Bridge, to trigger the Lambda function, I've got some different rules set up that are going to kick that Lambda function off. So I have it just running on a schedule. And I've got a few different events configured pointing at different traffic generators. I was building kind of a complex demo where I needed different types of traffic with different authorization tokens. You can get this as simple or as complex as you want by just configuring more uh, event bridge and Lambda functions. And I've got it running every minute, which was fine for my use case. And I, I pointed it at that traffic generation function that I was just showing you a couple of moments ago. And so by pointing it at that function, What's going to happen is every minute that function is going to get triggered. It's going to be sent an event by event bridge. It's going to get triggered. It's going to hit my API endpoint, generate that traffic that I that I need for my demo. All right, so I've showed you the event bridge that's running every minute. It is triggering that really super simple, like ten line, five, three or four line Python script that's just really curling the URL, just making a GET request to an endpoint. Now. Uh, let me show you what it looks like, why I built this in the first place. This part is the solution, but this is why I built it. So I built this solution specifically because I am working a lot on API Gateway and uh, I'm building a project that is going to do some monitoring of my API, okay? So if I go to my API, I can just show you a couple things here. Uh, I've got uh, some different endpoints. In fact, I believe most of my Lambda functions are just running a get on this URL, actually, this unicorn's URL. But I'm hitting this API gateway, and I had a use case where I needed to collect access logs from API gateway. So an access log, um, you can think of that as like a transact. When you make a transaction, you can log the IP and the information about that request that came into API gateway. And I wanted to build a demo to show off how you could use API gateway to monitor usage patterns of your API. Uh, and so I'll show you the dashboard. If I go into my API usage dashboard here, um, at in state, so I've got three event bridge triggers pointing at three different Lambda functions. One of those functions is just creating this baseline of traffic up here. Uh, and, and so this green line is all of the requests coming into my API gateway, right? This blue line here, this is a request being sent by a specific user. And so I've set up a metric filter to basically turn this into a graph. And the idea for me is that I can show you how you can get visibility into a specific user identity, right? So this basic user is just an account I have set up called Tony. And Tony, he doesn't use the API very much, right? You can see his, his requests are incrementing at a really low rate. But then I've got this kind of power user here that's using the API in a really heavy way. And all of this is powered by just a simple scheduled event bridge event and a Lambda function. All right. I know this wasn't rocket science, but I hope it was useful to you. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can subscribe. Until next time, take it easy. Bye.